Scroll of Ox 107. Hi everyone, if you're new here, my name is Sally and I'm a mixed media artist in Australia. And if you're not new here, welcome back. I'm still setting up my studio and figuring out my exact final setup. We're getting there, but there's chaos everywhere. I want to thank you so much for your patience while I figure this all out and for bearing with me while I lost so much footage. I literally had five videos partially filmed and I lost it all. Luckily the subscription boxes keep coming. I have a yearly subscription to Scroller Box so this is a art subscription box from the UK and it's a box of mystery art supplies with a zine that gives you lots of information on how to use the supplies and also a prompt word to create artwork inspired by the supplies and the artist's curation. So we're gonna open up this box, see what's inside. We're gonna review all the supplies and make some art. So let's go. All right, let's see what we got. Feels thick, she feels thick. Okay, all right, yeah, ooh, Windsor & Newton watercolours, Windsor & Newton Cotman watercolours sketches pocket set, looks like we have six, 12 colours, so we'll open that in a sec. Uh, we also have a 4B graphite pencil. Nice. We usually get a 2B in the boxes, so that's nice. Uh, Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen Fine Liner Black in a 0 0.7. Awesome. So it's sort of like a, it's not too chunky nib. Nice size. And our little sticker. Oh, that's cute. It's a little mouse using flowers as like a little umbrella. Oh my goodness, that's cute. Wonky Candy is a Swizz, Swizzles drumstick. I don't ever know any of these UK candies, so it's fun. And a little very slim don't slim eraser okay let's put this aside for a minute oh my goodness look at how stinking cute this is uh, so our featured artist is rosemary baker here's echo to come and check everything out that is all their socials. So our surface is an A5 watercolour paper, 200 GSM, 10 sheets. It's got a nice, slightly textured surface. And Echo. We have a little rundown of our supplies. Uh, our featured artist. Oh my goodness, this is so cute. Oh, look, it's a little kitty cat. Looks like UAV. Uh, Scorilla tips. How to do watercolor. I love using watercolor. Uh, deep dive warm up with watercolors. In the process of making this gorgeous artwork called May Mouse. Oh my god, I love it. Uh, scroller gallery from box 105, which was like the Posca Barkers and then like the graffiti type street art type inspo. Lady Doobug or Carmel. Congrats. Love to see my internet friends in here. And here's the top three. 
that's super cute. And then the little retrospective that um, Scroll Box have been doing in the zines lately with just some past artworks from past boxes. And then the Scroll Extra, seven themes of art, lines, shape, form, texture, color, value, and space. Really helpful information. And our prompt for this month is Guardians of the Garden. I have so many creatures in my garden. Maybe we'll do birds because you know I love to paint birdies. And I have so many amazing birds in my garden. Although there is a little mouse that runs around out the front that the cats really love to watch from the inside. Let's just quickly open up this and have a look. I've used these um, Windsor & Newton Common watercolours before and they're beautiful. How do I open it? I don't know how to open it. This way. Here we go. Oh, so we get to unwrap them all. Cute. Oh, and there's a little travel brush. Look at this. Okay, gorgeous. Let's swatch everything out and make something. Thank you so much to my Kofi members. Your names are on the screen here. I adore you. Signing up to the memberships is a really great way to support me. And the links for all the tiers are down below in the description box. There's three tiers to choose from and all the information is down there. So check that out if that's something that you're interested in. I send out a couple of zines every month and there's also an option for an art print as well that's exclusive to my members. So. I think it provides good value. I send it out uh, all over the world. If you're interested to go check that out. Thank you. Now let's get back to the video. So I was very glad that I hadn't put uh, press on nails on because unwrapping these are quite fiddly and I have had to do this before with another little uh, half pan set and it's just, yeah, it's a lot of unwrapping the plastic outer layer. And then unwrapping the paper outer layer, which has all the color information on it. Um, but just FYI, the little half pans also have the name printed on the actual pan as well. So it's a really lovely set of 12 colors. And then we also have our Pitt Artist Pen Fine Liner and a 4B Graphite Pencil. We don't really need to swatch those so much because we know what they look like. So our 12 shades are Lemon Yellow Hue, then we have Cadmium Yellow Hue, Cadmium Red Pale Hue, Alizarin Crimson Hue, Ultramarine, and Cerulean Blue Hue, Viridian Hue, Sap green, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and then there's also a Chinese white, which I didn't swatch out separately because it's white and white watercolour really just makes your watercolour shades a bit more pastel and then I started mixing some shades I like to see if I can mix some really dark sort of neutral grays and something that's close to a black and I did that just here with the red the alizarin viridian and the ultramarine you get really nice deep deep tones uh, if you mix those together and I wanted to see how waterproof the fine liner was and when it was dry it lifted a little bit and then when it wasn't quite dry uh, it lifted quite a lot so that's another option for a grey as well. This set also came with a really fantastic little booklet and it gives you a rundown of all of the colours in the range. 
And then it also included some really helpful techniques about different ways to use your watercolor and different techniques. So different applications like wet on wet, flat washes, dropped water, uh, blending colors and that sort of thing. So we've got an A5 pad of watercolor paper here. I actually, for, I just wanted to do something smaller. So I just folded this piece in half so I would have two A6 pieces of paper because our prompt was Guardians of the Garden and I wanted to do more than one. But we're gonna start off with the iconic sulfur crested cockatoo. So initially when I saw the prompt and the color palette that I had, my first thought was to do birds, local birds, but I actually just painted a few birds in a recent video. So I'm going to do the sulfur crested cockatoo and then some extra little garden buddies after this one so make sure you stay tuned for those uh, i really love sketching with a 4b pencil uh they it's just so much deeper and richer than a 2b 2b and 4b are my most preferred grades i guess of graphite pencil and this eraser the derwent slim eraser was actually really good too because it doesn't leave What's the word for it? Like eraser dust? It leaves quite like one big chunk rather than lots of little pieces around. So I found that really, really handy as well. So if the little pieces of eraser dust drive you nuts, then this would be a good option for you to check out. The Derwent Slim. And so after I'd sketched my little bird friend, I just outlined it all in the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. And it's a really lovely line weight, this one. It's nice and bold, but not too thick, but you can also get fine details with it. I think the 0 0.5 and a 0 0.7 are probably my most preferred uh, fine liner nib sizes. I just think they're the most sort of versatile for what I like to do so you can see here it just leaves sort of like one big chunk of eraser rather than lots of little bits I was very impressed and then it is time to add the watercolor after we get rid of the cat fur which is a part of just daily life <laughs> And I went straight in with the cadmium yellow hue. I didn't need to mix it with anything because it is like the perfect cockatoo yellow. And then to blend this grey, I used the ultramarine mixed with a bit of the cadmium pale hue. And when you add complementary colours to each other, it neutralises them. So adding sort of like an orange or an orangey red to a blue really like cuts it down and it's really something worth experimenting with I'm not explaining it properly at all here I'm sorry <laughs> um, but that's the way that I get these beautiful muted neutral tones with such a bright color palette so I also did want to quickly mention the value of this box. I have had an issue with the upgrade boxes recently and I'll go more into that when I do the next video for that one. But this watercolor set in Australia online, I found it anywhere from 50 to to $100. So even just that alone made this box very, very good value for me. So I just went in with the burnt umber to do the branches and once that first layer had dried I just went in to add a bit more texture to the tree branch there and then using a deeper shade of the grey that I'd mixed to add some dimension and depth. Watercolour painting is a lesson in patience because if you use if you try to go on top of your first layer when that first layer is still wet, 
you're just going to get a muddy mess and the paints are going to blend together um, but if you wait for your first layer to dry and it does dry pretty quickly depending on how much water you add of course like more water is going to take a lot longer to dry uh, but if you wait for your first layer to dry and then you go on top of that you can get some really beautiful effects with using the same tone of paint and just deepening it and getting depth in that way so I just made some little green leaves and then I decided to use the cadmium red pale hue just straight uh, but just watered down as the background so that's what I did I put some water down on the paper first in that top section just to see what it would look like in a wet on wet and then when I use the paint directly on the dry paper you can see how much more intense it is um, but these paints the pigment is so beautiful and it's really easy to sort of lift and blend out so you could put it there and then just go in with just water on the brush and blend it out and get those really sort of soft edges and even though the cockatoo is a white bird with just that little bit of color on its crest and it has a tiny bit of yellow in its tail feathers as well uh, i think adding the tree branches and the leaves and this bright orange background really helped to bring it all to life and you can see like just how much you can get from an illustration of a white bird on a white piece of paper just by deliberately placing your shadows where you do and a little background and the black line work it really makes it all come together and because i'd done the leaves in outline i actually decided to go in just do some watercolor leaves just straight watercolor without the outline just to add a little bit of dimension and interest so I just placed those around once I'd done the background and this is our cockatoo friend and I'm really stoked this with the way that this turned out I think it's very cute so then I decided to do a praying mantis because praying mantis is also something that I see quite regularly here they often decide to just like do their little dance uh, across my studio windows and it's always such a joy when I see them they're so extraordinary they're amazing creatures and I love whenever I see them I don't think they're super common I always get like a little bit of a thrill when I see one so yeah that's one of the other creatures that I see pretty regularly at my place cockatoo is definitely the most common bird that's here and I just mixed a purple for the background and did it in some long grass and then I wanted to do some more so I folded another piece of paper and did a little sketch taking inspiration from the art print which was a mouse well I did a bush rat because that's what I have at my place and the ones at my place are quite small I'm not sure how big they get um, but it, they're very very cute and I, as you'll see here I'm using a different brush because I took a break for lunch came back could not find that little brush anywhere I was like I literally just had it I tore my desk apart and it was actually in the paint water because <laughs> it's really short and I didn't see it in the glass so I found it and then I started using it again <laughs> so I just mixed another more brownish gray and I used some of the green and the burnt sienna for this did a bit of blue in the background and here's my little bush rat and then for the fourth creature now this one I have only seen one of at my place but the day that an echidna walked straight past my studio window up to my front door and then into my garden was one of the best days of my life 
they are so so cute and I could not believe it like it was literally right in front of me it just walked straight up to the front door and the cats were bamboozled so my cats are indoor cats um, and it's so beautiful here I often have the front door open and just have the screen door because they love to look outside and see all the bugs and the birds they were so bamboozled when they saw this echidna like all of us were so shocked and yeah so while it's not a common creature in my garden it's definitely one of the most exciting ones that I've had so I had to do a little picture of the echidna as well my bush rat and my echidna the praying mantis and the cockatoo and these are the four guardians of my garden Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all your support. Uh, I'm so stoked that there's over a thousand of you here now. It's really exciting. Let me know what your favorite little creature, little garden guardian was. I'm so, so grateful that I live in this amazing spot where I have all these little guys hanging out with me regularly. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.